Oh, babe. Huh, I think the scale's broken. Well, the number's supposed to be going down, not up. Uh, leave me alone. Let's go over what PCOS really is, the four different types, what the true root causes are. You have to understand the type of PCOS that you have and the true root causes of it. PCOS affects 10 to 13% of women and it's the leading cause of infertility worldwide. Half of the women with PCOS never get diagnosed or they get misdiagnosed. There are four types of PCOS. At the end, I'm going to give you natural things that you can do at home to help treat your PCOS. Number one, one of the most common types of PCOS is insulin resistant PCOS. Insulin is a hormone that regulates your blood sugar levels. Your body doesn't like to have too much sugar in the blood, so it needs to either be put into the cells to be used or it needs to be stored as fat. Insulin is the hormone that actually opens up a door into the cells so that glucose can go from your bloodstream and into the cell. Insulin resistance is a state in which more and more insulin is needed to open up that door inside the cell. And eventually this leads to high blood glucose values, weight gain, weight loss resistance. And this can also trigger the ovary to produce more male hormones, also known as androgens like testosterone and DHEAS. This is the hormone cascade that is responsible for the typical PCOS symptoms like irregular periods, acne, excess hair growth on the chin and other parts of the body, and weight gain. The second most common type of PCOS is inflammatory PCOS. This is where chronic inflammation can disrupt the entire balance of the body. It can interfere with ovulation, causing irregular periods, but it will also cause other symptoms like headaches, extreme fatigue, skin problems like eczema, psoriasis, or rashes, it can also cause digestive issues like heartburn, diarrhea, constipation, and you may even have an irritable bowel syndrome diagnosis. Having any of these symptoms is a big red flag for inflammation, and if left untreated for long enough, chronic inflammation can cascade into insulin resistance. Then you'll have symptoms of both insulin resistance PCOS and inflammation PCOS. In situations like these, women will commonly continue to have symptoms and continue having trouble getting pregnant even if they are taking medications that treats the insulin resistance. That's because we're not treating the true root cause of the imbalance in the body, which is inflammation. You may have heard of a classification of PCOS called thin type PCOS, where you don't see the weight gain or the weight loss resistance, or maybe even the irregular periods that you'll see with insulin resistant PCOS, but you'll still see many of these other symptoms that are related to inflammation. So inflammation PCOS is one of the types where you can find thin type PCOS. The third type is adrenal PCOS. This one is a little less commonly found, but it's linked to your adrenal glands. These are small glands that sit on top of your kidneys and release your stress hormones like cortisol, epinephrine, and norepinephrine, as well as your hormone DHEAS and aldosterone, which regulates your blood pressure. In this type, we're producing too much DHEAS that then gets converted into testosterone. This is going to give us our symptoms like acne, irregular cycles, hirsutism, or excess hair on body and face. But in this type, the additional DHEAS and testosterone is originating from the adrenal glands and not the ovaries. Because if you remember from insulin resistant PCOS, the additional testosterone from there is because insulin is making the ovary produce more. In adrenal type PCOS, the additional testosterone is because the adrenal gland is releasing too much DHEAS, which then gets converted into testosterone. So you'll get similar symptoms because there's increased testosterone in both insulin resistant PCOS and adrenal type PCOS. But the cause in this type is not from insulin. What happens is practitioners will see high testosterone and start automatically treating insulin resistance, even though the high testosterone in this case is not originating from insulin resistance and therefore we're not hitting the right angle. Adrenal PCOS is the other type that you'll see thin type PCOS fall under as well. The fourth type is post birth control PCOS. Many women will have hormonal imbalance and PCOS symptoms after coming off of a hormonal contraceptive, especially if you had irregular periods before you went on. Hormonal contraceptives are often hailed as the treatment for PCOS and women are told that they will regulate their periods. In reality, these don't regulate anything, but rather shut the system down and then mimic a regular period happening in the body. This type of PCOS can take anywhere from six months to 18 months to regulate, and if it's not caught soon enough or regulated appropriately, it can snowball into a host of other health issues, especially if you have gut health problems or other inflammatory processes happening, which can also be side effects from birth control. 
Those are the four types. And yes, you'll notice there is a lot of crossover in symptoms. And that's because a lot of women will have more than one of these happening at the same time. So you're probably wondering, how do I know which type I have? In order for us to really understand what's happening for you, we need to have a really well done assessment of your symptoms and your concerns along with an in-depth and detailed lab workup. A lot of times I will see your symptoms being completely ignored in your doctor's office and then only a very general lab workup being complete. If that's happening, things get missed all the time. Remember how I said that you could be insulin resistant for a long time before your glucose numbers or your A1C are even touched? That's why a complete lab workup like the one you see here on screen is very important. We check the fasting insulin and ideally we want to see that below five micro units per mil. Now, when you check your lab sheet, you might notice that that wide range goes all the way up to 26 micro units per mil. And your doctor is telling you, yeah, you're at 25. You're totally fine. You're not insulin resistant. If you have an insulin number that is above 10, we need to start treating that because you are becoming insulin resistant and you are on the road to more problems if we don't treat. Which brings us to treatment. Conventional practitioners will discuss PCOS treatment in terms of the medications that they can use to help normalize the hormonal imbalance. But this is just a band-aid. With inflammatory PCOS, we don't want to just take ovulation stimulation medication. We want to figure out what is causing the inflammation in the body, stop it so that the body can become more balanced and ovulate on its own. Here are some general treatment options for each type. And remember that when we are actually taking aim at the thing that is causing your symptoms, we can completely cure your PCOS. For insulin resistant PCOS, our main focus is going to be dietary. The first thing is to make sure you're having enough protein. The optimal range for protein that you want to aim for having each day is between 1.5 and 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram per day. You'll also want to discover your personal carbohydrate tolerance. This might include you testing your glucose after each meal for a little bit, just to see how your body responds to different carbohydrate loads. Another thing is you'll want to change the order in which you eat your food. You'll start with your veggie first, then your protein, and then you will have your carbohydrate. Eating it in this order will help decrease your glucose response by up to 75%, and this will also help decrease your insulin needed. You may have heard to go dairy-free or gluten-free to help with your PCOS, but for most women, this is not the be-all, end-all answer. It can absolutely be helpful for many women, but I recommend that we do this properly through a good elimination diet, and we don't rely on gluten-free products. Another thing to do when you have insulin-resistant PCOS is to add in cardio and strength training. Adding these kinds of workouts helps to decrease insulin resistance and improves blood parameters associated with PCOS. You're going to aim for working out one to three times a week, 20 to 30 minutes at a time. If you're not exercising right now and you'd like to start something, then I recommend starting with a 20 to 30 minute walk after meals. And something that's really helpful is you can actually do some squats after your meals. There are studies that show that doing short bursts of exercise like bodyweight squats helps to improve glucose uptake and insulin sensitivity. So doing 50 to 20 squats is easy to do and effective. For inflammatory PCOS, the focus is on identifying and eliminating triggers of inflammation in your body. Your goal here should be that the majority of your food is coming from whole and unprocessed sources. And we probably do need to do an elimination diet here for quite a significant period of time to figure out what your personal triggers are. We'll also want to clear environmental triggers of inflammation for you as well. So you'll want to check your makeups, your lotions, your deodorants, your shampoos and conditioners, all the products that you're using throughout your house, your garbage bags, your your kitchen utensils, all of these things matter when it comes to environmental toxins. Making sure you have enough protein intake is also really important, as well as everything we spoke about in insulin resistant PCOS. And that is because there is often crossover. A lot of times inflammatory PCOS will go on so long that it does cascade into causing some insulin resistance. So we want to meld the two and do all of these things together. For adrenal PCOS, this is predominantly going to be about your stress, both physical stress and emotional stress. There are some other factors that can influence adrenal PCOS here, but for the vast majority of people, those things don't apply. Stress can be from many different factors. It can be from physical factors like not eating enough or exercising too much or not getting enough sleep. Another cause of high stress in the body can also be from inflammation. So this is where those two things can cross over. For this type of stress, you're going to want to make sure that you decrease your working out and even maybe give yourself a break for a little bit. You want to make sure you're eating enough protein and enough calories throughout the day. And if you're having trouble sleeping, then that's something that needs to be looked into as well. You want to aim for getting about seven to nine hours of sleep every single night. 
The other thing here is that inflammation is a physical stress on the body. So we need to make sure that we are eliminating any physical stress on you, including inflammation. Stress can also be from emotional things like having a very high stress job or some very stressful situation going on in your life. This is where things like exercise, meditations, EFT tapping, journaling, gratitude, and other mindfulness practices come into play. For post birth control PCOS, we need to support the body with a very nutrient dense diet made up of whole and unprocessed foods. A big focus here is going to be on restoring gut health, which hormonal contraceptives tend to create problems with. The gut is really important in the detoxification process and hormonal balancing, so we want to make sure we really tend to this part of your body a lot. We want to make sure we're building that back up, so lots of probiotic foods like kimchi and sauerkraut, and we also maybe want to do an elimination diet here as well to also find any sources of inflammation for you. You also want to support your liver function with really bright colors. I recommend two to three bright colors at each meal. Make sure you like the video, subscribe down below, and hit the little bell notification so that you know when my next video comes out, which is going to be a step-by-step -step process on how you can cure your PCOS.